What a weekend in MMA in total. So much happened. It's hard to prioritize exactly where to start, but this is Verbal Tap, the show that proves fighting is easier from outside the cage. And from someone we're going to lead off with who has been outside the cage, I'm curious to find out how true that is. Ladies and gentlemen, Verbal Tap continues its very exclusive rights to George's St. Pierre, former champion, current contender, fighting Michael Bisping. GSP, how does it feel to be back? Uh, the rumors are true. I am back. Yeah. So we're actually, we're obviously a week into this. Uh, you've already yeah. been like getting harassed drunkenly. So I think everybody's around. Yes, uh, I was. <laughs> how does it feel? Are you ready? You said you think you're even better now. You know, you're not worried about cage rust, or anything like that. Ah, uh, 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 Kevin, uh, Phillips, Kevin, did you not hear the part where I said I am back? No, I heard it. I'm with. And uh, first of all, I want to say I'm excited. Obviously, everyone is. I think uh, all we're be. looking for is a little bit of like, how do you feel? Do you think you're going to be able to dominate ah, yes. Bisping? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I hear your question. I hear you forming it in your brain. Uh, GSP is in your head. You're very so he can he can uh, like Professor X because I am bald. Uh, <laughs> if you remember our very first episode, yeah. that was a Thanks, joke man. I said the very back then. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but I use funny. my mental uh, telepathy to hear what the Phillips Kevin is thinking right now. And the question you are asking me is garbage. So uh, <laughs> you need to stop embarrassing yourself. Okay. Uh, couldn't agree more. I've asked about five questions, so I don't know which one it was that struck you as amateur. Uh, all of them. If I were to, uh, basically, uh, condense it down to one. <laughs> sure. That's good feedback. I appreciate it. So if we could maybe turn it back to you, who's sure, of course. a uh, UFC legend and uh, has yes. announced their very high profile return against a current UFC champion, which I think yes, is... Yes, I am back. Yeah. I think it's huge news. I think people are like... What's GSP feeling? Does he feel like he's at a 10 of I'll knock Matt Hughes out in my prime? Or are you feeling like maybe we're at a four Matt Sarah? Like where are you at on the spectrum? I am at 49 percent. Uh, wait, no, sorry. I, I use the uh, the Quebec metric system. Uh, I am at 49,000 uh, percent. It was a simple like one to ten type scale oh forty nine thousand is very normal in uh french canadian uh, i i need to take this moment to uh respond to uh michael bisping michael bisping why are you so mean to me that's a good uh, question. you know i i look at him and i go he is embarrassing himself yes no and then i said uh uh michael bisping uh you smell like uh like uh i could smell the alcohol on you yes and then guess what he did that night? What did he do? Oh, he got very drunk. He got <laughs> uh, so drunk that he went up to Eddie Bravo and he was like, Eddie Braj, I must tell you, you are garbage. And they fought for like 30 minutes. He uh, tried to, to tell him stuff. It was very bad. Very bad. Very sad. <laughs> but one thing proven correct again, GSP, time and time again. Number one all time correct. And Truth that uh, and on the interviews, uh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you having on to answer those tough questions. Verbal Tap fans, ladies and gentlemen around the world, welterweight champion, number one in our hearts, Georges St. Pierre. The uh, rumors are true. I am back. Thank you. Um, I guess here, let me, I'll t and now leaving the podcast because I'm assuming he has to go train for a fight I think he feels good about. From Quebec, Montreal, former st former star and will always of the Boneyard. Catch it on history.com. Oh, God, Pierre. get on with it. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> GSP is more beloved than Bisping. Oh, George is St. Pierre. All right. Verbal Tep fans, it's a tough moment for me. I have to say goodbye, obviously, to my favorite fighter. And Bye. hello to host... Raph Esparza. Raph, how are you doing this evening? I'm uh, very good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I, you a little hoarse in your throat? Just a little. You know, it's sometimes you get around. a little something in your throat. <laughs> it takes you a while <clears throat> to kind of clear it out and just be like, <clears throat> how are yeah. you doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I also, 
I just I happen to when I hear you know when you you do vocal mimicry, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Um. I have a gift and I never use it uh, like, especially at the top of the show. I would but never when ask you, you to, I don't want to compromise your gift. I don't want to, no, like, not at all. No. you wouldn't say, you know, um, yo, yo, ma, could you play the cello at my kid's podcast? You know, right. I, I like but do you ever do that where you talk to somebody and then you start to take on their voice? So like I heard GSP that whole time and I wanted to, you know, start talking like, cause it's so interesting to talk like him. If you think about it, it is, it's, uh, it, requires a pattern and a collection and once again i want to urge our audience to go see the bone collector with gsp uh-huh. no it's the bone yard is the it the bone it? yard shit the bone yard the bone collector, <laughs> the bone collector the very Jones different people are gonna get 30 minutes in and be pissed at me <laughs> kevin's the only person celebrating the 20th anniversary of the bone collector not uh the bone yard at the history channel everybody Oh, it's uh, we're off to a hot start, is what they call it in the business. Raph, yes, GSP coming back is great news. I was of a mixed heart when I saw what happened Friday night on okay. our, on our previously declared grappling holiday Friday. Sure, when Rafael Lovato Jr. entered the cage against someone in Bellator. Um, <laughs> no submissions. Are you? Do you yeah. think he's maybe not training hard enough in jujitsu? What do you? What do you think? The I think answer he's is? lost it, Kevin. If we're being honest, I look at Rafael Lovato Jr. Hot takes fight without any any jujitsu, yeah. and it makes me wonder: Does he still have it? it? It does. I mean, we we don't see him competing on the circuit all the time. So, what are we to think? He can't do it anymore is really what I, I think the takeaway is there. I do, too. And I think that's it's a tough night for us to see it. You're, uh, I did enjoy your meme, the double Kanye face. Yes. Obviously, we're being a little facetious because 13 seconds, a kick, and quite a few knees. And the fight ended before it got the chance to take its full course. And you seem to be alluding to the fact that it ended a little quickly. That was some people's biggest complaint. Because here we are congratulating Rafael Lovato Jr. on uh, his excellent win. And you have some people be like, I think they stopped that a little early. And it's like, you can shut the fuck up. We're happy for Rafael Lovato. We're not saying, hey, congratulations, referee. You made the right call. Nobody ever congratulates the referee. The The fight was called. You get 13 seconds. You do have to defend yourself. At some juncture in those 13 seconds. I uh, I saw it. Big first kicks. Mean knees. I think it was the knees that scared the shit out of yeah. people. Well, it was the, the fact that you me. forget that Lovato also has a lot of leg reach. So if he wants to kick you, he has the ability to do so. But those knees then added into the extra uh, bonus of it all. But we are glad... We did put out that meme, the double Kanye meme, and uh, Lovato enjoyed it. That's our way of saying to Professor Lovato, congratulations, I guess, if they had to stop it early and you didn't do jiu-jitsu, yeah. whatever. And I couldn't agree more. The fight was stopped way too early. I didn't get to see a pass, a topside Kimura. You know, <laughs> you have certain expectations. It's, I guess, I guess next time. Well, it seems like Lovato's already back in the gym, so it's not a huge issue. But you know what a huge <laughs> he's issue He's fighting is, though, next Kevin? week. Just everybody. There's a super mm. fight coming up. Uh, he's <laughs> always competing, so it won't be long. We're good. But you do want to uh, know what a big issue was this weekend, though. Uh, what? Well, somebody decided to ask Dana White just kind of like an open-ended question about fighters looking for a new fight. Kind of one that might get yeah. some attention. Raph, I kind of need to stop you here. Um, Why? I'm gonna have to mute you again. Yeah, I we we did actually include this in the rundown. Oh. Uh, the producers and I were just like, Raph, I just need to know. I wanted to tell you about it and talk about it. I think that's a way better way of doing this. No, 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 you're super wrong because I have Dana on the other line, oh, so I'm actually on. gonna mute you now. Fine, because. Believe it or not, I got a text message from president of the UFC spokesman, Dana White, who said he wanted to give uh, he wanted to present a softer side of his argument. He wanted to 
be a little eloquent, be a little understated. Thought maybe I'll come on my best friend's podcast. Uh, you know, just talk man to man conversationally and here to explain his comments about fighters seeking money fights, president of the UFC world, Teddy bear, Dana white. You know, Kevin, I want to say thank you so much for bringing me on the show. I want to say thank you to verbal tap for allowing me the ability to say, say what I want to say, you know, yeah. when, you, when you get to say the things, cause you know, sometimes you, you dummies, and I, I say that respectfully, you dummies yeah. take the things I say and you, you like jumble them together in right. a way that presents them in the exact order in which I said them. Yeah. Sometimes so we'll I write it down verbatim, fair. which is really annoying. It's fucking stupid. If you, I mean, again, all considerations aside, I want to say to the judge, jury, my peers over here, um, this is very important for those fighters who are asking for money. Here is my argument. It's very simple. Fuck those guys. What the fuck are you thinking about? You don't fucking come to me and ask me for fucking money fights. Fuck you. Uh, Dana, I thought we were going to do something a little nicer. Do you want to try yeah, to take? Yeah, I, I was like, fucking nice at the beginning. I said, fucking, uh, you know, thank you for fucking having me on. You thanked me. You didn't say anything to the fighters. <laughs> well, I also t- thanked Verbal Tap, okay? <laughs> oh, that's true. So you did that's think- too. You, you and then thought- I said some bullshit about judges and juries and peers. And fuck that shit. I have no fucking peers. Um, okay. Well, this is getting a little a little traditional. You know, I got another fucking thing I need to bring up right now. Yeah, it's fucking traditional because traditional values are fucking great. Make America great again. Here's my fucking thing I've got going on right fucking now, which is this. Yeah. Tyrone Woodley is all fucking pissed. He's all fucking baby boo-hoo hurt because I said the white kid won. Now, granted, I probably shouldn't have said it like that. Okay? That was probably a bad choice. But But, I mean, did he win? I'm going to ask you. Did he win? No, I, I had Woodley. Fuck you then. <laughs> you never cease to disappoint. I think we're seeing um, a more mature Dana, if I could just speak for. My therapist says it's a good start. Sure. Well, the fact you have a therapist. I just, just <laughs> or are you referring to the bar again? <laughs> you know what? We'll get into it later. Dana. Do you have a problem specifically with fighters trying to seek out outside of their weight classes, like big time names or people they think is a fascinating fight? Okay, here's what I have to say about that. And you guys listen closely on this one. I'm tired of fighters asking for fucking money fights. Everybody knows in the UFC, they're like, hey, I want to get this guy. I want to fight this guy. I want a fucking money fight. If you want a fucking money fight, don't fight the UFC. Am I fucking right? (laughs) fucking morons yeah (laughs) well president of the ufc spokesman very busy has to get on a jet to china to brief the board about um i don't know the next movie that the whole boston crew that own the ufc are making you never know hey i need to bring up one thing real quick if you guys think i'm fucking bad you know the person who i fucking now work for was ari fucking gold on entourage So think about how those conversations go. I'm a fucking sweetheart compared to him right now. That's why Wahlberg owns some. Well, president of the UFC Verbal Tap fans, Dana White. Fuck you guys. Excellent. That's the type of stuff you just don't get at other places. I'm going to bring Raph back on. Raph, Dana, not as uh, nice as as he had advertised prior to. (laughs) He Um, makes a lot of promises, Kev. He does, a man with bold predictions. Can I can I tell you my reservation of all this? Because he's he's not listening anymore, right? No, he's gone. He doesn't. Okay. I don't think he's listening even when he's on here. But so he's making this whole argument about Conor McGregor being the only person who can ask for money fights, and Dana White seems to always be like astounded that other fighters have the gall to ask for anything. Because I started to wonder when people get like a knockout that's really good or a submission that's really good, like a definitive finish to a fight. They're the first people to now get on the mic and go, Dana, how about that 50 grand? Am I right? 50K. And Dana always has that shit eating grin like, okay, you fucker. So when that happens, I'm like, I wonder how long that's going to take for him to build where he's tired of those people asking for money. Like to Dana, a multimillionaire, it's got to be like homeless people coming up to you and being like, hey, can I have like a dollar? And Dana's like, no, fuck you. (laughs) 
so the, the equivalent of that is, can I have a dollar? Which is, hey, Dana, can I have some basic health care? Because I'm a fighter and like I'm all broken on the inside. Fuck off. Fucking money yeah. fights. That fucking way. money fights. So the issue is he's trying to say like, hey, everybody, none of you are as exceptional as Conor McGregor. Well, Conor McGregor didn't just become Conor McGregor overnight. He did this by a very calculated set. And yes, he put in the work. He got to that point. But then he started tipping it over by saying like, all right, now fuck you, pay me, which is music to Dana's ears because somebody talks his language. But it's weird that he wants to try and suppress anybody from even thinking about raising their voice to ask for money fights. And you know what the problem with that is? Why do you think people want money fights, Kevin? I'm just guessing mm-hmm. because it's pretty expensive to be an MMA fighter. Yeah. costs a lot of money to get that good. And uh, okay. people are seeing maybe some newer fighters take over positions that they might have earned via record. And okay. it's the only way to get the UFC's attention. Okay. And uh, again, all fair, all good. But I'm going to dig a little bit deeper. How about it's the fact that that you have people who hold titles who don't defend them. And when they don't defend those titles, then you have rankings which become irrelevant. So if you do work your way to trying to build up to get to Conor McGregor status, granted, maybe you're not as verbose or good on the microphone, but you're trying to put in the work because Dana's saying his remedy to all of that is, shut up and fucking fight. We pay you what we pay you. Well, where did that come into effect this weekend? Where you had Tony Ferguson, who is expecting to fight Khabib, Kate Gate, Namagavanov. And instead of that fight happening, Khabib can't make weight because possibly Cake took him out of the equation. Cannot confirm or deny any of that, but that's what the story is going around. That's not the point. The point is this. To then save the card, they then said that they were offering Tony Ferguson a fight, but for way less money. It was for half the money, and he was going to fight, I believe it was Michael Johnson who was stepping up, and it was not going to be for a title. So you have on the same kind of weekend where Dana's talking about how he's pissed that fighters are asking for the money fight. He's then substantially reducing the amount of pay to somebody who's trying to work their way up to it. What is Khabib's... I'm sorry, what is Tony Ferguson's record going in right now? Just if you were to say off the top of your head, Kevin, what is Tony Ferguson's record in the UFC? Like uh, 11 and 1 or something? Tony Ferguson right now, overall record, is 22 and 3. Jesus. He has been on a win streak since October 19th, 2013. He has been with the UFC since... 2011 in most jobs you kind of need to give a raise a couple times and guess what he fought michael johnson before so yeah there are people who are offering to come through and try and make a name and do something big and i get it and i get that maybe the financials may not work because maybe they're going to expect to lose some money as well But none of that has to do with Tony Ferguson and him being at fault because they have a champion in their division that they're both trying to get title shots for who is not really active right now. So, yeah, you're going to have fighters who are going to ask for the money fight if the championship in itself and the rankings don't matter. Which, by the way, asks Jacare. Damian Maya, Ugh. any of these fighters we're naming. The that is the don't saddest matter. part about the GSP thing. I have no issue with it. People are really pissed that GSP, you know, fast passed his way into a title shot. And you have some legitimacy there. I would say here's the issue. One, GSP is the money fight. So again, they're doing it to themselves. It's not just Connor. And two, if you look at it, GSP vacated the title. So I guess it makes sense that he he can just fight for it. And it could go either way. He could go in the Ronda Rousey way where he comes back and he's not as good as he used to be. Or he could come back and surprise us all because GSP is an amazing athlete. We don't know that yet. We just know that's what they did. And the biggest fallout from that is Jacare gets fucked over. So when people were pissed and they're like, I'll never watch the UFC again, Ah, it makes me so mad. It makes us mad too. On some effects, while we are giving Dana some shit for it, we do understand the business side of it. But that doesn't mean you need to go on the offensive and start blaming people for the shit that you have to do as a business 
because that's your job is to fucking put up with that shit. So deal with it. I don't fucking come to you and tell you the problems I have for my fucking job and be like, fuck those guys, Dana, am I right? <laughs> fucking filing in payroll all week. What the fuck? <laughs> and we're talking about an organization with a, you know, lengthy history of not giving a shit about fighters. Just in Thank general. You. So I l- I'm in on the damn. I'm looking at Tony Ferguson's record, by the way. This is a painful shit. Just green, 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 green. <laughs> Just win, 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 win. All right, we're gonna talk a lot of uh, EBI with our friend TP Grant, who's back to find out if he won UFC 209, the one that didn't feature the Diaz brothers, mm-hmm. which I believe it will be known as. Uh, we're also going to talk EBI 11 with him. We're just going to do some introductory comments. EBI 11, overall, again, I it's hard to fault them for trying some things. We make some suggestions for Slap Jitsu that I think are really helpful, but in an awesome night where Gordon Ryan did what he did, and he's fun to watch. Yeah. And uh, damn, it's just become a grappling event where y- you get to see your favorites, you get to see Nathan Orchard, you get to see Gio, mm-hmm. or you get to see Richie Martinez, you get to see Gordon Ryan, you see him. Uh, a lot of them, I got to see Darryl O'Connell. Fun to watch him fight. So some uh, crazy things on on the precipice in terms of even if this wasn't their best event, it was still fun to watch grappling-wise. I like watching these guys in tournament style. I just do. Yep. It's really awesome. And Raph was there. He's going to talk to us about some comments. Raph, most fun conversation. You took your sister, which is amazing. Yes, she went with yes. you to do some uh, work, <laughs> which rocks. Yeah, she did. Uh, she took some photos for us. But I would like to point out one thing, which is this is the second grappling thing I've taken my sister to. So it's kind of weird to be like, hey, look, um, I know that I've shown you the parts where it's like, you know, they, they kind of like do a form of uh, grappling on the ground. But this time they're going to add in slaps. And people are going and to be pimp smacking each other. One hundred percent. There's a lot of you know pimp and strong. And my sister just looked at me and goes, "Cool, yeah, I was reading about it." And I'm like, "Oh shit!" And the last one I took her to, and it seems funny to mention it now, but my sister helped us cover the Nawaza challenge. And you know who the final four was for that? No, I don't remember. Damon Nitkin. Gabe Argus, Steven Martinez, and the winner was Gordon Ryan, who beat Steven Martinez in there. All of those people are still highly active in the jiu-jitsu community and quite good. And you have people like Gabe Argus now who are also winning title belts in tandem with his good friend Edwin Najmi. So it's impressive to see those people going out and doing amazing things. And this was way back at a time, you know, all a year and a half ago when Gordon was a brown belt. So my sister can say things like, oh, Gordon's competing. Yeah, I've been looking at his Instagram. Yeah, he's been killing it. It's really cool. I'm really excited to see him compete. <laughs> so to have somebody in my family who I can talk about with this sort of stuff and be like, oh, my God. They're complaining about AJ and she's like, oh, that again. Jeez. <laughs> Just to have shorthand is really funny. So the next phase to get her on the mats. You know, she was taking photos with uh, somebody who looked at her and was like, hey, so like, do you train? And she's like, no, but my brother does. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that's what it was. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe eventually we'll see. But I, I just know that she is a fan. She is an enthusiast. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am living proof that you can make this happen. This is how we get people to enjoy our sport. Bring your family, bring your friends, do this sort of stuff. You'll be surprised how much they enjoyed it because while I was stressed out and I don't want to give too much away about uh, combat jujitsu, my sister was like, it was interesting. I'm kind of into it. And I was like, damn, she is the killer of our family. <laughs> yeah, I could see it. I'm, I'm ready. Are you – Ready to uh, transition to our good friend TP Grant and roll into some more EBI talk. Yeah, let's do that. Well, 
Well, guys, it's been a weird day. I feel like I've come so far. I just came from, you know, reporting on EBI. But it's been a whole weekend full of fights. Ref, and quick so we, rumor yes. confirmer, you mm-hmm. interviewed uh, Wagner Roca. I did. Did he hit you with his forehead? Did he headbutt you during the interview? You got to tell me. And everyone no. was <laughs> So I'll give a spoiler to you guys because your family. Did he grind your head into the nearest wall with his forehead? No. Did he but... face lock you? Oh, <laughs> shut up, guest, unnamed guest. I don't know. These who are good you questions, are Rap. You don't. <laughs> you answer them. Damn it. Listen again. I was trying to tell you guys a secret because since you're family, and listen, everybody who's listening is family. I will tell you how I ended the interview with Wagner. I basically thanked him for not kicking anybody off the stage at the very end of the interview, <laughs> to which he there gave me a go. very serious look and was just like, <laughs> well, and I was like, uh-huh, and he goes, well, I mean, I only kick people off of stages who really, like, are terrible people. Okay. I had, like, ten people come up to me and be like, man, that was awesome what you did. So he and doubled was down. Like, he wasn't like, I would never do that again. He was like, hey, that's a... Uh, I mean, it's like my sand wedge. I just need it occasionally. I mean, listen, people, I'm just saying when 10 people tell me something is funny, I don't sit there and go, it killed. That joke (laughs) killed. (laughs) Okay. Well, let's ask TP, the guest, when 10 people read your articles, how do you feel? Mm. Do you feel like a lot of people Uh, saw it? Over the moon. I mean, like that grappling analysis thing, that's like double the usual readership for grappling analysis. (laughs) I'm sorry. Yeah, let me recalculate. Uh, if like one person read, that would be tough. Oh, well, but then I, I feel like I'm, is just a little under par. Perfect. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I'm TP. glad you bring this up, Kev. This whole uh, obviously, week, TP say. played over under Kevin from last week. He's returning this week. Before we get to talking about, you know, the ugly part, the competition. Let's talk a little bit about how you are this evening, TP. Are you feeling good? Did you ingest? All of the MMA and jiu-jitsu and slap boxing, a.k.a. slap jitsu, that you could take in? Uh, I did. I watched the full UFC card, and then I actually was um, in Ohio visiting some family and woke up early the next what? morning and drove home. And then I made it partway through the EBI card before falling asleep on the couch. Can I ask uh, so, you a question? Would you ever yeah. go to Ohio if your family wasn't there? I mean, I did because I went there for school, so I, I can't say no. <laughs> Follow up but, like, 27 questions. Okay. How worst is Ohio on like a scale of it's almost Florida? It's pretty bad, right? Uh, I've driven oh, through Florida's it so much. Tough one. I just had to drive through uh, Ohio so it, much. Being Columbus isn't that bad. It's, it's a nice little like yeah. it, it's a nice little um like. It's a it's a good sized city. It's like a city you can really get your arms around and live there for a couple of years and feel like you know it. I really really like Columbus. Um, the rest of Ohio, I just kind of drove through to get to Columbus. I visited Bowling Green, not the site of the terrorist attack, the Ohio version. There was a lot of snow. Mm-hmm. I've been to Athens. Great Halloween festival. Oh. They have a mental yes. home. Uh, a former former. It's no longer. <laughs> And it's supremely haunted, sits over the entire campus. So great place to drink. Yes, Athens is the place that, like, so Ohio State's a, you know, a pretty serious party school. Never heard of but it. But Halloween is empty. There, everyone goes to Athens for oh. Halloween. Okay, that explains <laughs> all the assholes <laughs> that I yeah, that, that, that right there. <laughs> That's, I'm, just... I'm not going to deny it. Like Ohio State, like I love <laughs> well, Ohio State. I love our fan base. We're a bunch of assholes. Drunk college kids in general, a real charitable bunch. You are uh, also a jiu-jitsu aficionado. Did mm-hmm. the slap jitsu give you anxiety? Because I had to do a quick therapist on call, like just a quick half hour. Um, raise my blood pressure. That was one of those where I was like, I, I think I've watched too much MMA because I'm like, man, they're not they're not hitting hard enough. <laughs> I, I like, don't disagree. Of course we, what I said to Raph we, we was... We had to have the moment. Too much, not enough something. That's, Go ahead. Oh, 
Yeah, I was like, we we had to have the moment because of everyone starting to slap the legs. So we had the moment where I was like, oh, was that a tap? Was that a slap? Like, I, as soon as as soon as guys started hitting the legs, I was like, oh, we're gonna have a a slap or tap moment. Yeah. And I think it was in the slap second the second tap. one where the guy had like a deep heel hook, and the guy slapped his leg really hard, and the guy immediately let go and was like, that was a tap. And I was like, yeah, well, that's they're probably gonna have to smooth that over. Otherwise, some people are going to get broke when they're tapping, and the guy's like, he was hitting me. Well, it's good business for us, because I kept hearing the word verbal tap being thrown around, and I was like, yes? Oh, oh. you guys are uh, not talking Are you talking about, about us? Y- yes? You need us? Yes. What? Free advertising. I, listen, every time someone says verbal tap, Kevin gets his weed wings. Yeah, I can fly. <laughs> I'm excited. And by the way, Fuck both of you. I'm stealing the he tapped if someone hits my leg. I also might start doing it when someone's got me in a submission. Be like, Dubs TF, bro. I was just trying to soften you up for the pass. A little slap jitsu. Uh, I'm I'm to, incorporating that in my game immediately. To be, to be totally honest, I think I got that from like a Paul Harris meme like way back in the day. <laughs> the <slap and> <laughs> It was like Paul Harris looking all beat, like, you know, hulked out. It says he's like opponent taps and he says he's hitting me crank harder. <laughs> <laughs> so to give you guys some uh, knowledge of what it felt like out there, I was cringing because one of the guys I actually knew and it's J.M. Holland and J.M.'s a good guy. And he had admitted to me that he's he had kind okay of an injury ducker. going through. He's just okay at ducking. Hey, listen, he's, when he's he was the first good. person to start off, that's when we knew. We're like, oh, he ducked that slap. That's the game that we're into. Oh, yeah. that's right. And I knew he was kind of injured, but anytime I saw him getting slapped where I, I knew his injury was, I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. So I thought I was like, man, I'm so stressed out by all of this shit. It is really, really stressing me out. And people were, around me were loving it. It was playing huge all around me. And I thought, well, maybe I'm the only one. Not the case. There were some other people who were definitely stressed out. And I thought, well, maybe it's only because I know JM. Next match. Oh, yep. Still stressed. Nope. This is still. Because like you said, yeah, yeah, I, FTP, I was like, it's a difference between I've covered. I've literally been cage side for MMA fights. And I was like, whatever. That's fine. I've seen people get knocked out viciously. Totally fine. But for whatever reason, it's like, are you either MMA or are you jujitsu? And my brain just couldn't work between the two. But everybody else seemed to love it. Yeah, I, I kind of, I, I'm, I'm like a little. I, I enjoyed it, but then again, part of me was like, oh well, you know, I don't, I don't know how much the slaps. Like the slaps definitely changed how they were playing, but I feel like at some point there are gonna be some dudes, like especially some former MMA dudes, who are like, I don't care if you slap me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have two suggestions that I think can punch it up. Um, pun not intended. First, make it a five-minute super fight. The tournament thing was brutal. Like, it just was a lot. Five-minute super fight, we're in, we're out. It's just in the middle. It's this thing we remember that was fun and high pace. What are you talking about, Kev? You mean the reward wasn't good enough to just advance to get more slap jitsu? No, I agreed with you made that observation on social media, obviously there in the crowd, I assume as well. The well, reward for your first slap jitsu match is another fucking slap. What is this? This is bullshit. Your reward should be a Bud Light match after that, and I fully sponsor that. Well, keep I've been telling though, you Kev. for years, a weed match it's EBI for fuck's sake. Now they've gone corporate, so it's going to be difficult, but it would have been unbelievable to get a house stone. Can this person do jujitsu coming to my Facebook live very soon? Well, don't worry. We definitely got a how high can a person referee a match yesterday. <laughs> so we'll get to that in a second. But before we do, I want to finish this thought, which is I interviewed Nick who won the whole thing. And when I did, I was like, hey, man, so you won a belt. And he's like, uh, I don't, I don't think anything else. I don't know. And I was like, re- okay. I just wanted to know why you had to slap your face in. It's cool. Thanks though, man. He did. Yay. He did give himself a celebratory. 
He also, if you were watching the broadcast, you heard none of his victory speech or if you fall asleep. But if you were watching the broadcast still, you would have completely missed everything. He was cussing so much, we didn't hear a word. <laughs> we just no, saw the, the mic cut out so badly. Oh, it was, was it the mic? Oh, mm-hmm. the mic was cutting out frequently. Yes, it appeared as though they were bleeping him, which didn't make any sense to me. So maybe they just lost the mic for the whole interview. Yeah, it was it was rough watching the mic work on that. As as uh, I know, uh, Raph, you were in house. The production got a little rough at times. Uh, yeah, just like yeah, just some like some inter- like some replays where they showed like nothing happening and some weird cut like some weird late cuts where like they finished a shot on the camera and the camera would just like drift down to the floor and you just get a shot for the floor for a couple seconds. There was some weird production stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, I could, I had, um, I was actually right behind all of the, uh, like kind of the director's area. And so I could see the commentators right in front of me and hear them for a majority of things. And I could like watch them tending to things at the very beginning Eddie Bravo was so pissed because there was no sound coming in to Florentine Gardens. So they were running the introduction, the EBI intro graphics, and you heard nothing. And you just hear Eddie Bravo being like, there's no sound. And you're like, "Mm -hmm. (laughs) mm-hmm. He's not wrong. And you see the guys just kind of looking at each other. He's right. No one can hear it. Just as a... But he sees that happening, and the guys are looking at each other like, I don't know what to do. Um, and they just kind of, like, started looking at what buttons to push. Kind of like when you tell your grandparents, like, hey, can you set the clock on the microwave? And they just kind of go, I know there's a lot of buttons here. <laughs> <laughs> and this was their first show not at the Orpheum. Uh, well. Or uh, in a while, right? Yes. I so mean, the Mexico City mind, obviously wasn't. But keep in mind, this is really funny because um, I've covered every EBI from two except Mexico on. And the first one was at Florentine Gardens here in Hollywood. There are some people who drove to Florentine Gardens, Hollywood, not Florentine Gardens, El Monte, which made for some people not getting there on time. I'm not going to name names. I'm just going to say one of the former guests that's been on our show who's on Ultimate Beastmaster <laughs> might be named Juan Bernardo. Uh, made that mistake. So anyway, it sucks, but it's a different venue. So there's just a whole host of things that were different. So if you guys saw things that were different on the production booth, it was kind of them going back to their roots of where they started at Florentine Gardens. So if you look at the first two, it had that club setting. But it also, like, all the things we got used to at the Orpheum, like lights, sure, were not there and <laughs> around. So when there were all these things coming up, you just kind of, like, took a, a look around the room and you go, let's just make best with what we've got. But we brought up Eddie Bravo being high. So I want to ask you guys, was there anything more uncomfortable than the early stoppages? Not once, but twice. I... And- I- TP, you're the upper belt here, so we defer to you. I thought the fighters were fucking up left and right. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was a weird event, just overall. Like, the reps seemed kind of... There were some weird repping moments. There were some weird athlete moments. I just... I don't know. This whole... It, it, this was, like, the most disjointed EBI I've seen in a while. I don't know. I, I, this is, I think this is the most disjointed one I've seen, just on all fronts. Um, having been to all of them live, it was did, more did, on the... Did, have you mentioned that? I don't think he... Did Kevin, do you think he's mentioned that before? You, you know, I had actually only thought he had been to three, but now that he says it, it's like, I'm thinking about it. Wow, I think he has Listen here, Red Pen. First of all, when you go put in the work, maybe you'll you'll take a little bit more pride in what you do. Second of all... We get it. You live in California. <laughs> L.A., bro. Listen, there, there's more than just doing that. There are a lot of people who live in L.A., but it's the effort and the style in which I go to cover these events, T.P. When you, you're older, maybe you'll understand. That's not an alternate fact, by the way. A lot of people live in L.A. He is right. A lot of people. So... TP, uh, and I find it interesting that you would do this because I knew you stopped watching when there was about a thousand less tweets. And for (laughs) 
for reals, if we're talking about people who like to mention things over and over again, you were definitely <laughs> in the middle of trying to over explain your way onto my Twitter feed. And I was like, you need to step off. Yeah, well, that that particular instance, that was actually a, a friend slash training partner of mine that I just like to rib every so often when he, you know, makes a small mistake. I just like to I just like to get on a little. And the fact that I got to like, you know, annoy you in the process was just a bonus. Sure, that's fine. But like here's the thing. We were in agreement. You and I were in agreement, and yet I didn't like any part of it. <laughs> then like, I feel like I accomplished all fronts. Sure, but when you're like interjecting to basically say that you agree with me, it's not saying you agree with me like a normal human being. It's like, well, Raph, actually, let me go ahead and explain a few things. It was an inside leg attack, yes, and I can't affirm that. And it's like nobody gives a fuck, TP. Literally just say, Raph's right. Or just go, hey, it was an inside leg attack because – Ugh, the the TP going on, and it was just like, he's going to compare this to fencing in about a minute. This is, uh, there's nothing I can do about this. And you know what was funny? To be fair, you, you, you both, the, you and the other guy brought it up before I did. Well, because you're dumb. And it's important that people know that. Because when I had people around me, I put the one note that I knew would shut both of you up. Which is you guys went off on your own tangent because, you know, you're lovers and whatever. But I showed the people around me at EBI and I was like, this shut them up. And they're like, what shut them up? And it just said, shut up, nerds, and watch the match. And everybody was like, that was fair, Raph. So everybody, the 10 people I knew around me, it killed. So it was the appropriate thing. <laughs> I, I like how you brought that back around. That was good. It's called a callback. One day you'll learn them. Hey, anyways. So as we do all of this, we we know, and here some of you are wondering why we're spending more time on EBI than we are on UFC 209. No Kevin, one's that's wondering, reason, that. correct? Oh, okay. no Just one's why. Everyone watched both. They're like, yeah, we we were, we saw this coming. Um, okay, so if that's the case, then let's kind of duck under talking about UFC 209. Kevin, did, did anybody stand out to you at EBI? Uh, Gordon Ryan's damn good. Craig Davis was the standout for me, though. I think. Boy, Wagner. Uh, you're talking about Craig Jones. Craig Jones. I'm sorry, Craig Davis. Craig Jones is uh, new. First of all, has a very Gordon esque look. I think that's helpful. It was at times hard to hard to tell their games apart. I was ready for that match because Wagner no no real submission attempts on his way to victory, which is I also think impressive in the EBI rule set. It's just like this guy is good to stand. Um, but obviously has some massive defense, so I, I'm uh, I'm keeping an eye on Craig. He's my man now. Now let me ask this: Did you have anybody that stood out to you, TP, or did you have anything that like really jumped out at you from your? You shouldn't have been watching EBI. You sh you said that you weren't going to be able to watch it last week, and then somehow magically you found the time. So I, obviously it was, it was a little off in the air, and then I I was gonna say I I tried to squeeze it in, and I clearly it didn't work out, but uh. Of the, like, half that I saw and then caught up with a little bit this morning, um, Gordon Ryan, Gordon Ryan continue, like, he favors that Kimura back take game right now. More, that's, like, the A, that, that appears to be his A game. And he made a little snarky post on social media today, just being, hey, guys, you like all my leg locks last night. So I think he was trying to send a message. I also think he was shaking up his game a little bit. Um uh, which was really cool to see. I like that aspect of his game. And then, even though Wagner Hocha didn't really submit anyone like in regulation, or try to, the absolutely vicious face lock that he put on in overtime was amazing. That was a little rough. That was <laughs> like just watching him do that, was, that. That was the oh god, right? This guy was the pro MMA fighter in the bracket. Like that was that was absolutely brutal. Well, it was also the moment when I'm like, oh, he wants to be interviewed because he just strolled into the interview. And I was just like, I was talking with Marcel and then he like walked in and I go, well, I did want to talk to you, but I'm also slightly nervous. You're going to like crush my face. At one point I had put on our Twitter, I said, uh, I believe, and I want to double check this just to make sure I'm quoting myself correctly, but I believe I wrote Wagner advances via vicious rear naked choke or like face crush 
what is the technical term? Are we because Buffer was all over the place with what he thought. <laughs> when Buffer called a knee bar an arm bar, I said, "Listen, dude, we don't expect you to know a lot about jujitsu." We do expect you to identify the parts of the body. That is, it uh, does make me a little confused because we love the stuff. we love the Bruce. Bruce is a friend and a friend of the show. It's just maybe know the difference between the two. I'm just saying. See, I, I, think, I think it's. Easy to go. I'm actually going to blame the Oscars. I think now no. that it's happened there, everybody's like, <laughs> "Fuck it, who cares? It can't be that bad." Until they announce the next president or forgot to in this last one, how bad could the Oscar? You know. It's like no one's watching. <laughs> I'm fine. It's not a majority draw, so I'm good. So if we're, we're talking about all these things, and uh, TP, I think you brought up the fact that, yeah, uh, Gordon really wanted to make a point of it. I kind of caught it, but I didn't get to ask this to him. But the thing I did notice was he seemed bored throughout most of the evening. He seemed like he knew he was going to win. In my interview, he referred to all of his fellow competitors as children. And then on top of that, did, was I the only one in thinking he let go of submissions? Because people around me were like, oh, especially they, I think of that third round, he was yeah. like, he just actively let go of those leg attacks. Second round, too. He, yeah, he seemed like he was flowing. He, he, mm -hmm. and like, I think his, his second match was one of the last matches I remember watching before falling asleep. Super easy. And yeah. he, he looked like he was doing a flow roll. Mm. <laughs> and not working very hard still even like uh, a soft flow because yeah he absolutely yeah. left let go of at least at least one a few different triangle he had a, a few different arm triangles and then he was just good to go no leg attacks whatsoever it was great that guy also almost knocked himself out his second opponent did nearly end yeah, himself yeah, with via, the, the flying arm bar attempt I thought he was trying to pull guard. And I, I don't know. It was it, whatever it was. It wasn't good. Let's go with yours because it's more generous. <laughs> I thought he was just pulling guard. And was like I missed. No, 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 no. I had somebody who was looking at me, and I just go, "Oh no!" And they go, "Why, Raph? Why, why are you having that reaction?" I go, "You know, there are tons of bad ways to lose the guard, and I wouldn't want it to be my fault where I jumped and hit my head." <laughs> And they were like, Raph, Raph, no guts, no glory. And I was like, all right. Mm. Thanks, Good Sly Stallone Thank you. movies all around me. I don't need anyone's bullshit. No guts. You had no glory. In this <laughs> movie, I play guts and I wasn't able to glory. Rocky, 20 years later, more accurately dealing with head trauma than, you know. <laughs> Rocky Five is Rocky versus his brain. Everybody knows that. <laughs> So TP, okay. So that was. Do you have any like general overall thoughts from EBI that you wanted to to kind of leave us with impressions of? Because Lord knows the fact that you did not finish using Twitter meant that you had died a death of sleep. So you obviously have other thoughts you didn't tweet out that probably are like twelve hundred words. But do you have other thoughts? Uh, I, I just feel like, generally speaking, of what I saw, this seems like the most disjointed um, EBI. And I think uh, I think they're they're continuing to tweak the overtime, and I think they're going to have to keep tweaking it. Um, and I, I, I didn't see enough of this. Did we really have a guy in, in this tournament? Did we have a guy who who really played the overtime rules like we've had in the past, who would just try to just try to stall their way to overtime and then win on escape time? I can't speak officially on that, but I feel like there are at least a couple who had that look of like midway through going overtime. I would say there are two yeah. candidates. I I feel like that's that, that's a game plan that they really that the current rule set in EBI doesn't have an answer for. If a guy just wants to come in and, and just make it to overtime and try to win that way and doesn't care about winning money. Um, I don't really feel like there's a great way to address that other than just mismatching them and hope they're not good enough to pull it off. Oh, no, I have a thought. Because if the idea is that you get money, if you win in regulation, maybe you should lose money. <laughs> have their credit card on the side and just be ready to swipe it through the machine. Absolutely. I have a card swipe. I've got it on my phone. Let's just do it right here, right now. 
Listen, one of the best parts about watching the show The Wall on NBC, if you're not watching it, and I know you are, ratings tell me you do. Basically, they have it's Plinko, and it's hosted by Chris Hardwick. And they give these opportunities to people, everyday people, to play Plinko, put something up top, have a ball fall, and you can win money if you get the questions right, and you lose money if you get the question wrong, and it still goes anyway. Yeah, I've and seen this, actually. One of my favorite actually. things about the show I watched one. is when people lose the million dollars. <laughs> so people win, and you can win in excess of, like, I think somebody's won up with, like, 12 million or something. But then it can all go away if they keep fucking up when they get questions wrong. And there's nothing more exciting than watching people lose money because I told people, I'm like, I get equally as excited watching people win the money as I do watching them lose it so epically. I feel that's the same sort of feeling I have here. And I've been trying to par- parlay with my game show friends uh, a concept where I'm like, you know, not enough game shows take your money away. <laughs> it would be cool just- to start with 200 money in the bank. Yeah, like you have a match where it's like uh, less than five submissions, fifty bucks gone. <laughs> right, well, I like the idea that they ask you. They're like, "What do you have for collateral?" And you're like, "Why are you asking that?" What? <laughs> What'd you drive here in? Is it nice? You want to put that up? <laughs> <laughs> what you throw in that wedding ring? We'll call it good. <laughs> We've made this instantly better. Somebody call yes. Eddie. And that's how EBI becomes a becomes a shady card game. Hey, listen, I am all about being a shady card game. I have no uh, no hints or Raps allegations. That's Raph's fight that. nickname. We call mm-hmm. him the shady card game. Absolutely. Now, before we close up shop on that, the one thing I did want to say is, I know we brought it up earlier with Eddie, but the one thing I was telling people is I go, man, you know, there's never really an argument I have for my friends who – are saying like, oh man, weed's so bad. I was like, listen, I don't smoke at all, but like, I want my friends, like Kevin, to have weed. It makes them somewhat productive. And mm-hmm. honestly, I can't see a negative reason for anything involved with weed. What's that? Oh, Eddie didn't know he was in regulation and not overtime. Weed. Oops. It's a powerful drug. <laughs> You're right. That's the one thing. Okay. You have that. I don't use before I referee, but I don't do that very frequently. <laughs> but, but honestly, Eddie didn't know it was overtime. That's the one area where I was like, I cannot. I've got nothing for you, dude. And then when he didn't know where he was, it was like, well, I have an idea. How about we just put them back in Spider? And Which, like, by the way, what no. the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, no. we all were like, no, that's not how that works. So... Uh, yeah, that that was that was uh, if if we're working on the whole combat jujitsu and like trying to get jujitsu to be more like MMA, mm-hmm. that moment was a success. That was very <laughs> MMA like. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Uh, you know, like I said, I feel like combat jujitsu. We're gonna see more of it. I, I just read a quote from Eddie before we went to air that said it went better than I thought it would, which means you'll see it again. So, oh yeah. Uh, anyway, but it, the like I said, the crowd responded so well to it. I, I think there is a, a thing for a lot of people who are always saying like self defense. It's so important. It's so important. It's what you do jujitsu for. Like that fan base was given their their like meat. So you know, is what it is. All right, let's close up on UFC two hundred eight. Uh, we've basically the uh, walked in gotten around it as much as we can. Were there any highlights for you, though, TP? Were there any good fights that you enjoyed out of? Because I think oh. there is there is definitely at least one that we can mention. Okay, so setting aside setting aside um, the bet, <laughs> which just tormented me all night, uh, there were a bunch of good fights. There were some incredible comebacks and upsets on this card. It actually was a fairly good card until – until that whole main event thing happened. And I could, the only thing I was thinking of is, you know what this card really could have used was an absolute barn burr of a lightweight title fight. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Well, we didn't get that it. didn't happen. And not only did that not happen, but, um, neither Kate did Gate happened. Yeah. So that's a thing, guys. So, you know, be careful if you eat cake, if you need to make weight during the week. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Uh, and then, of <laughs> course, did you feel at all responsible for Khabib and Tony, Kevin? 
feel responsible for the failed fight. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely do. I said it was going to be fight of the night. I called that. That was my bad. I should have almost immediately apologized. I also said I was excited for it, followed it up with it a few days later. I was like, really, I'm looking forward to that. It's my bad, guys. Sorry. Mia what Clark. was your first reaction when you saw that fight was off, TP? Um, I mean, besides getting down in the fetal position and crying. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I my first reaction was I was hoping Khabib was okay because obviously Psst. weight cut went sideways on him and that that's a bad situation. Um, the second feeling was overwhelming rage at the whatever the hell is keeping this fight from happening. Because apparently this fight is just never going to happen. It's not meant to be. <laughs> um, and and I have my suspicions of what it was this time around, which which we'll get to later. I, I think I think the balance came due for somebody making some sort of horrible deal with some evil power. Wait, what? Because, what? Oh, okay, so there's a run in this card where uh, just to bring it back to our little our little wager here. Um in which there was like four fights in a row in which the guy I picked was fucking cruising <laughs> for a part of the fight. And then, and then just would get finished in the most horrific, <laughs> awful fashion. So Kevin, whatever fucking human sacrifice you did, I, I hope it was worth it. And <laughs> it I'm just assuming that the Khabib, the Khabib Ferguson fight being called off was like the price you had to pay for this black <laughs> magic you used to win this damn bet. <laughs> I don't know how he knows what the parameters were, but that's a uh, fun fact. I've just based off of some habitual things, know someone that's a cousin of the devil. I did make a deal. I don't know him directly or her. I'm not going to say which, but uh, All right, well, they were like, you know, Khabib, and I was like, sold. <laughs> Put it on. <laughs> no problem. Fuck TP Grant. I want this win. That's just how well, it went TP, down. you're one for, you know, uh, really knowing how to segue into a grand reveal, so kudos I to mean, you. Like, on this. If any, if anyone was listening, it was like I think I got like three fights right that whole night. Well, and I see three. Elkins yes, comeback. I mean, there were some moments. The Kelly decision. Uh, Timur from a, <laughs> just inches from, from dying. It was my night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, Darren Elkin. Darren Elkin's comeback was like <laughs> when that happened. I'm like, oh god, like something, something. He did something, something. There's some black magic going. I think that's why I sent you to wrap the text, saying like, should I just change my Twitter handle now? This is incredible. Kevin has black magic. <laughs> well, you got the Overeem zombie comeback, so I don't want to hear I it did. too I, much. And. I, I, this you, you, you know what your magic came up short in in one in one match and then I got a and then I got and then I got a BS decision with the whole Woodley thing because I I feel like that fight probably should have been a draw. Again, they really wanted to do that to us again. A forty seven forty seven. When they mentioned that, I was just like, oh god, no, we're not doing a trilogy on this. Well, let, let's be honest. It was the exact same fight with the rounds in a different order. Yeah, like. It yeah. wasn't a good fight in terms of like, I know they were like, what do you mean? They both have unique styles. Like, we didn't get to see it. We just saw you guys kind of dancing around each other yeah. for a long time. And when it didn't start out, and we should have known when Alcantara um, knee barred the shit out of Luke Sanders. That's when we should have known. Yeah. Yeah. Because get, getting God his ass beat. <laughs> Just getting the shit yeah. kicked out of him. Nope. <laughs> One of the and then and then and then Sanders having like zero zero urgency on escaping it. Just kind of like, oh yeah, he's rolling. Dude, this this guy's gas. He doesn't have it. Oh, I'm in trouble. I'm gonna try to turn. Nope. I'm gonna try to turn the other way right into the knee ball. I'm tapping. Uh, <laughs> the important thing like, to note I, here, though. Go ahead. I was, I've been there. I've totally been there when you like. You you got a dude and you think he's just done and he rolls for a leg and you're like ah whatever he doesn't have this and they're like oh no I'm in trouble and then it's too late. <laughs> I like the idea that now hey if you are rolling with TP I'm just saying throw up your hail mary knee bar you never know it might work for you. I guess the the thing I'm looking at here is when you were messaging me and saying like Raf 
does Kevin have black magic? What's going on here? Should I change my Twitter handle? I immediately was like, I wanted to respond, but I didn't. I just wanted to tell you, relax. Kevin will set back in shortly. And that was about the moment when I saw Overeem basically knock out Mark Hunt viciously with one of his knees, which, uh, to my knowledge, not on steroids. Uh <laughs> As of this fight, as of this, as of oh, this moment, there's some bullshit things. We've never gone back for no contests ruled after the fact. Ooh, mm-hmm. I don't think it matters, but I'm thinking about it. Yep. Put an asterisk next to everything. But the Woodley and Thompson one was just one where you looked at and, and you call it kind of a regurgitation of the last fight. There were elements of the last fight. I feel like, you know, how when you get to fight week, and you start to reduce into like light sparring. I think that carried over into the actual fight. It's one of the few times I see fighters go, yeah, I'm going to take it easy. You know, I don't want to go too hard. It's fight week. And then have that exact same mentality once they got in there. Because I was like, oh, this is, I've seen way more intense uh, fights in an MMA gym than I have in this cage yeah. right now. Yeah, Woodley Woodley generally likes a slower pace and in that in that fight, like Thompson just gave it to him. It was like, No, we'll go this fight at your speed. We're gonna go this fight entire fight at your speed and, and Woodley is totally content to just let rounds go by waiting for his one chance to knock you out. Yep. And to be fair, I thought that he came more alive in like the fifth round where he's like, Oh, that's right, now I need to fight. But then toward the end of that when Woodley was getting dangerously close to knocking that guy out, it was, uh, yikes. There was some excitement there at the end. That, that, that at least saved the fight from being a complete and utter waste of time. Sure. Because it, you got some excitement at the end. And, and then the room I was in was just screaming at Woodley once he kind of like backed off and spent the last 20 seconds just kind of <laughs> circling after Wonder Boy. Just like, so are you going to like throw at me again so I can counter you? <laughs> It's a very effective way of doing it. I know that uh, as a defensive offensive jiu-jitsu practitioner, I, I know that game. It's good. <laughs> All right. So you you revealed it. You got three right. How many do you think Kevin got right? Uh, actually, hold on. Let me go through it. I got the first fight right. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the Hunt fight, the Woodley fight, and then I got the um, Wait, wait, wait. Amanda You're Cooper saying fight. you yep. had Woodley? Yeah. I remember you taking Thompson. Did I? I thought I took Woodley. I thought you took Thompson I in an, because I, you said he was going to make the adjustments, and I took no, Woodley. No, I, I, okay. We might have Wait, to go to the table. Wait, right. so, TP, what did you, you yeah, just said okay as if like. Well, there's some yeah, mild okay. disagreement here because I took, no, I, I, I thought, I'm, 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 I took Woodley. You're going like Kevin. Kevin, you you already won, man. You don't need to run up the score. But and, I, no, I you're just, to, damn right I, I did. A few times that he but, wants to be very accurate on how much he won by. I thought okay, I might have been wrong. I thought I took Woodley. I thought I said that last fight that that Thompson like didn't like didn't really take it seriously, and I thought Woodley was going to get back in the gym and make an adjustment. But I don't know. I it does it doesn't even matter at this point. I'm cool saying I only won three. It, well, All it's right. a three or four versus a six. I mean, the spread is negligent, uh, negligible yeah. as the. I just the, feels... the four black magic fights just just totally. <laughs> I do agree. As soon as Elkins won, I was like, "This is easy. I'm I'm riding. <laughs> There's no way." I got a little nervous when Hunt knocked Overeem out and Overeem came back. And I was like, "No, I'm good." Especially when Kelly triumphed, and. Triumphed, by the way, in the face of some real knee adversity. So, yeah, let that be a story for the kids. What the fuck is going on with his knee, by the way? How is he medically cleared to fight? Was anyone else wondering that? No, I guess. It sounds like no. It sounds like everybody was like, yeah, why not? Can you fight without cartilage? Can you fight with your fucking knee? It's MMA. Okay. I was kind of well, waiting mean, like, for TP to be like, back when I was scouting the miners, they'd let him fight with a bone out, but not. In, I was looking for some uh, old wisdom. Didn't get it. I mean, like New Jersey is the commission that actually like really seems to care about the fighters and like really take medical seriously, and everyone else is like, yeah, whatever. 
Awesome. Wow. Last last on my list for fighter safety might have been New Jersey. But Yeah. No, they're they're fantastic. They actually um I try to remember who it was, but like a couple of years ago they, they, they require like cat scans before you fight and they found like um something in a guy's brain that like could have been a uh, um that like could have ruptured and they basically canceled his fight and uh, he went and got treatment for it, but it was one of those things where like people were like, "Well, you legitimately might have saved this guy's life." I think it was Tiago Alves. I don't know. This is like from four or five years ago. Dun dun dun. dun. That's crazy. Well, now that you revealed that you you did lose and you lost to Kevin, which makes you zero and two against Kevin, which is yikes. I have yeah, to ask no, you, what was the bet? that you lost to Kevin now? Uh, I bo- I'm going to have to change my uh, Twitter handle to TP Cant. How long did we say for a week? You know, I- I'm mostly looking for like a high action, a night you're going to be able to stay up. Maybe a night you've you've had a little Red Bull. Uh, I'd really like you to tweet out an event as TP Cant. <laughs> that would be my my good all. And, you know, yeah, a good, a good two yeah. days. Yeah, there's a UFC event next weekend, so we can do that. If I'm not going to, uh, yeah, I should I should be doing that one. I think. Perfect. <laughs> you think? It's just like this I, week where you're like, I I I rap. I can't watch EBI. I, it's gonna be really tough for me. Next thing you know, Twitter starts ringing. TP's watching EBI. Hmm. <laughs> and like, he's yeah, pissed I, off I, about I, fencing. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <sighs> So you have to do you have to basically uh, tweet as TP can't. Was there anything else to that, Kevin? Uh, no. No, that was pretty much it. I think. Yeah, we're good. I yeah. feel like he also has to go on a string of uh, ten compliment kind of text, which is really just one oh, compliment. Yeah, that that was the joke. Yeah, actually, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, right. Yeah. You have to compliment me, and I was like, I mean, I only want one compliment, but it's TP, so it's going to be a ten parter. Yes. I'll try, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll start workshopping that. <laughs> I'm I'll, sure I'll, you I'll will. open up a couple of Google Docs. I'll, yeah. I'll open up a couple of Google Docs and uh, go through some ideas. I'm sure it'll tax your creative energy as a man of writing talent. Oh yeah, I'm I'm obviously nervous. Well, it was fun to beat you up. I appreciate the chance, and uh, you know I just felt confident from the start, and that's my lesson to you, TP. I've I've just in terms of what I think you roll like. Obviously, I don't know, but I assume. It just lacks confidence, much like his UFC picks, Raph. Mm. And uh, that's well, the lesson. He's talking, about, he's talking about my rolling now. I think. I think. I think now. Now it's starting to get personal. Uh, can I? Can I do a timeout here uh, with Kevin yeah. TP? A confidence timeout. Can you? <laughs> can you? Yeah. Can you? Can you go ahead and do a quick uh, earmuffs? Like, just put on those uh, noise concealers that we give you for this podcast for some strange reason. Oh. They're yeah, expensive. the ones that say verbal tap on them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> it's a nice All right, Kevin, oh, okay, can, yeah. can we have a, a quick chat here? Real I quick? think that's Kevin. a good idea. Yeah, Raf, what's up? Yeah, Kevin, he does like the sambo as well. Uh, yeah. he, he's fairly, you know, equipped on doing like the judo throws. Like if he knows what they are, I think Uh-oh. he like knows what to do with them. Oh, I'm not interested in that. Okay, yeah, thanks. I know you're not interested okay. in that. Plus, also, my sword does... sucks, so... Well, Massive that's not the issue. Damage. It's the getting on the inside, which is the whole point of the whole fencing thing. That's why he brings it up all the time. Yeah. I try to ignore it, but he tweets it out too many times that I can ignore it. But here's the important thing, Kevin. He also knows that you have an injured leg, and I'm not going to say which leg it is, Good. but I don't think it's the right. Uh, I'll have to check with my physician. Okay. But I'm just okay. saying. Anyway, I'm, I'm with all you. right, TV, you can come back in. If uh, I'm pushing oh, the okay, button. Okay, sorry. I was, I, I was in the middle of composing a tweet about fencing, so, you know. Oh, okay, good. I just wanted to make sure because you tagged me in a goddamn fencing video on my Facebook. And that's when it gets <laughs> real. Because all these people who look at me and my excessive I, coolness are like, wow, Raph, you have fencing on your Facebook? And I was like, yes. Ugh. Just, just so you know, when cool. I find, whenever I find a good video, I'm just going to be tagging you in it now. <laughs> just because I know you have an interest. I don't have an interest. I don't care. I, I am you keep, really you keep bringing okay. it up, so you clearly must like it. No, I bring it up because it's lame, and I like I enjoy you, but I have to tell my friends when they do things that are lame. And I'm sure you could try and convince me of its merits, and I'm sure it's great for the people it's great for. I'm just letting you know repeatedly, I have no interest. 
I will keep posting it to your wall. Don't worry. All uh, fence with you, friend. I'm ready. <laughs> shut up, Kevin. Don't try and suck up what? to him. I... Now that you spent time talking about his grappling, and he's one of the few guests to be like, "Are you talking shit about my grappling?" Did he just? Did this motherfucker just call my grappling lacking confidence? <laughs> Did I just remember that uh, maybe your not right leg well, is totally injured? Join us next time we do over under. We're we're obviously gonna have TP Grant back because he's the only one I would like on the show going forward. Yeah, if it was <laughs> Kevin versus TP continuously, uh, I, I don't and know. I think when I'm zero and one hundred, <laughs> <laughs> then it. I look forward to one on one, and I think it's gonna be your chance. Yeah. Well, TP, uh, obviously, if people want to find you, where can they go find you? Uh, if you want grappling or obviously fencing tweets, uh, at TP underscore Grant. Uh, that doesn't uh, sound I'm also right. On Facebook, <laughs> uh, and uh, I'll just say I'm also running the social media for our team Deerfield. Just the letter R, team Deerfield. Um, and throwing it out there because I can't believe I forgot it last week. We're actually set to host a camp in April. We're having. Speaking of, I'm um, you know, just you know, if you happen to mention Sambo at some point. Um, uh, Riley Bodycomb's coming out, and we're doing a three-day camp with him, uh, Matt Kirtley, who's a soppy and like another online writer, oh, Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt. Yeah, and then um, Hillary, uh, Hillary and Nelson, the owners of Inverted Gear, are going to be out there, and we're going to be doing a three-day camp in April. So check out our page. We're going to be posting about it. Uh, I'm going to be putting it out on my Facebook and Twitter. But uh, anyone can come out, and we'll mangle their not right leg for free. Yay, Kevin. See, that was an invitation to you. Uh, that would be fun. Friend. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to follow TP Can on Twitter. I'll make sure I see it. I'm all, I'm already following him. That's fair. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to say thank you to TP for always coming through and for being the only person in over under Kevin history to lose to Kevin twice. Uh, TP. Make in history. God damn it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Make it history. Didn't know that fact. You're like the hidden figures of Over Under Kevin. I just want to say thank you so much for going ahead and talking with us this evening. TV, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Always a good time. (laughs) Feels good to be back on the victory train where I've been the conductor most of the last year, some of the last year, a few mm. months of the last year, a few events mm. out of the last year, from what I remember, dominating mm. T.P. Grant. Can't stop. Might not, won't stop. Raph, what a... Uh, it just feels good. Feels good. Um, well, enjoy it while you can. Oh. We, we see that, you know, like fame, it's kind of fleeting. <laughs> Yeah. So I want you to really just be on the uppers and then remember this when you lose again uh, to somebody more articulate than TP Grant. Here's why I enjoy this so much. Not only did he tweet out right now, uh, we literally just got done with him. He said, fun follow up on the verbal tap cast tonight. Lost the bet, but always a good time. Hashtag fencing. <laughs> this fucking dork. Uh, it, like, if for him to say lost the bet, but always a good time, I think he's trying to subscribe to the very jiu-jitsu belief of you win or you learn. Yeah. And uh, w- very good sport about it. A very, very good sport. Almost like he's used to it. But, Kev, here's the more important thing, which is this. He, um, he took it a good stride. But I'm also intrigued how it has to feel where he knows more than you and he is losing. That's the thing I think that Prove really it, you know? has no to That's... like hurt him on the inside, which is he can spend hours on Twitter breaking down exactly what's happening as you watch it on the television. And yet his biggest foil is Kevin T Phillips. Sometimes you get in that match and you're just fighting someone that uh, has your number. And that's what TP's run into. Just a real has your number type of situation, as they call it. And that's going to round third for us as I uh, take another bravada leap of faith before Raph reminds me. TP Grant is brown belt, trains quite frequently in a lot of combat martial arts. We'll just go back to the part where I'm soaring like an eagle. That's going to take us right into the shout-outs portion. 
Raph, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, shout outs to the whole Jubera crew that's been beating the holy shit out of me. Also, uh, give a little shout out to Compound MMA, who's right around the corner. Just uh, found their updated online schedule, Raph. Yeah. Any MMA or jiu-jitsu gym is always very good to have their schedule online for those of us that are like, should I slide into a class? Just lay it out for us. Real simple. We get it. We'll find you. We'll pay the drop-in fee or we'll just join. We're in. Compliments to Compound MMA. Really easy to find. Both their Muay Thai and their emerging BJJ program, Raf, which is great yes. news for the snow in days around here. <laughs> uh, especially during the winter, despite the old Subaru being ready. The 2001's ready. So this is just a final shout out to Primera Auto. They got us new timing belt, new head gaskets. They're even going to give us a little bit of a warranty on it. Great stuff for an old car. <laughs> That's going to do it for me, Raph. I want to go ahead and start by uh, shouting out everybody at the LA Jiu-Jitsu Club. We had a great week. It's uh, another week closer to PANS, which happens next week. If you guys are going to PANS, please get in touch. Say what's up to me. I'm going to be making uh, the rounds out that way, so I would love to stop at some gyms. Uh, I have a couple in plan, but if you want the chance and opportunity to roll with me, which is not like a big selling point, but we like meeting you guys. We like having you guys uh, get the chance to roll with us as well. Uh, just hit me up. You can hit me at Verbal Tapcast and uh, on all the social media platforms. We can also say this with great confidence. We are very excited for big things coming from the LA Jiu-Jitsu Club, but shout outs, of course, to our good friend Octavio, who now is in Thailand. So we had a nice uh, get together to roll after an open mat uh, where things were fun. A lot of people came. We watched a little bit of the fights as well. And uh, I recognize something with Octavio, which is he is that friend who, like, I can't just send off. Like, I had finished training. He got there and I was like, ah, fuck, I have to roll with him because I'm not going to roll with him for a week. And we were told we put on quite the show, which never happens with me. So uh, kudos more to Octavio because that's what it is. But we will we will miss him momentarily. And then when he's back, we will get back to hating him. So go enjoy yourself, Octavio. Enjoy all the hookers Thailand has to give to you and potentially some of the STDs as well. Just, uh, be careful. Be safe. Yeah, be be yeah. safe. Don't, don't do anything dumb is really, I guess, what I'll, I'll basically condense that down to. So uh, that's Octavio on his side. Let's see what else is going on. Uh, yeah, the guys were all over the place. I mean, Joey and Eric were working, uh, EBI. Uh, Drew did a seminar over at NoHo MMA. And I've got news for you guys. If you want to get more of Drew's seminars, you can go ahead and catch those. He's going to be doing a few over at NoHo MMA in the near future. So if you miss this one because of EBI or uh, the IBJJF Pro that was going on or, or, or Abu Dhabi World Pros, all that sort of shit. Uh, just keep an eye on that. Also know that uh, we want to send a big shout out to all of the people over at Valley Martial Arts Center. VMEC. Uh, another great week of training over that way. Uh, you know, Casey killing it on the instruction. Everybody just enjoying themselves. Got in some good Marcelo time over the weekend. Uh, my favorite was I showed up really late last week and Marcelo just looked at me and he goes, Hoffa. I knew you would come tonight. And I was just like, oh, cool. I usually do. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's going to be another tournament coming up from those guys as well very, very, very soon. So uh, keep a listen here for more to come exclusively on that sort of information. I want to thank everybody who helped me at EBI. I can't do it by myself. And this time I had the opportunity to work with some great people, one of which Kevin mentioned before being my sister, who is such an enthusiast of grappling and it makes me so happy. And you know, Chris is one of my best friends in this world. Like, she is funny. She is super supportive. So, you know, she is one of those people who, when she enjoys the event, she does it out of love. And I think that's the best kind of thing as both a brother and a spectator of the sport you can kind of wish for because she's excited about it. Now she's excited to come and work again. At the end of the night, Kev, this is what she said to me. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah. We're packing up and she leaves and she like looks at me and she goes, hey, that was a lot of fun. I go, yeah, it was, it was a really lot of fun. She goes, let's just like let 
let me just quit my job and let's just do this full time. And I was like, no, 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 civilian. no, 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 so I thought that was funny. But I also want to send shout outs to a whole bunch of people. Uh, Blanca, Marissa Garcia, for always uh, coordinating and being very cordial to us. Um, I saw the guys from inside BJJ. We like eyed each other up. Uh, but I did see David Mitchell. So that was, I guess, fine. Uh, I didn't get to see Nathan Orchard, but props to him. We want to say uh, we know he's going to come back even stronger. He's a beast. Same with Richie. Same with a lot of our friends. Uh, again, shout out to J.M. Holland. We did an interview uh, last week or a week and a half ago. We put up some new interviews with him, with Joey and Drew from uh, the Jiu-Jitsu Club, and with our good friend Thor Skanky last week on our uh, YouTube. So go listen to those interviews. Watch them. They are very good. Those guys are very engaging, very nice, very funny. Get to know them because they are the backbone of our uh, of our community. And also our good friend uh, Marcos Bonilla, who I got to meet as well. So to all the people who I met at EBI, I'm, I'm very happy and excited. Obviously, Alejandro, Alex Perez was their right-hand man. And then our good friend, Chris Datsusara, a.k.a. Chris O'Dell. He was uh, – we used his table essentially. Uh, they have a whole row reserved and he let us stay where we were because we had one of the best angles in the house. And uh, Chris has always been a huge supporter of us and uh, a huge supporter of grappling in general. So we want to thank him for being so kind. It was good to run into Gary. Shout out to him. Uh, we basically made fun of a whole bunch of people. Shout out to our good friend Mario, who was on Cloud9 and visiting from out of town. We're glad that you made it out here. We hope you enjoy your training. We hope you have a safe uh, trip on back. And I also want to send a big shout out, big, big shout out to our good friend Alex. Alex from Germany, Kevin, came up to take a photo with me. That's awesome. He said that they love us in Germany. And I was hey. like, whoa. We love them in Germany. I, I've had a lot of fun in Germany. I'm going to say that out loud. So we'll go back in a heartbeat. <laughs> so he was uh, super nice, and I, I couldn't have been happier. We did not get the chance to train, and it was totally my bad. I totally like just dropped the ball on that one. But he uh, he was so nice, and uh, he he said such nice things. We got a photo together, and uh, you know, next time you're out in LA, good sir, please drop us a note. But we truly love and appreciate the fact that you listen to the show and you're a big fan and that you support us. That's always great. We we love that. We love when our fans come up and say, you know, yo to us because it makes it so much funner. And everybody else who I ran into, you basically know who you are. You know this is the all-encompassing end that I have to do, which is thank you very much. Big thanks also to our friend Michael Plaster, Casey Halstead, Eddie Bravo, the girls at Matt Therapy for whatever reason. Our friend DJ Mike Murder and Juan Bernardo, who I also made fun of up top because he went to the wrong Florentine Gardens. But in his defense, he was racing from a Tom DeBlast seminar in San Diego. So I get it. And that, my friend, is going to do it for me. <laughs> That's going to do it for us tonight here at Verbal Tap. I'm Kevin. Thanks for listening. Good night and good fight. Oh.